or the other item for discussion is just to let you know that the, uh, the Board of the Conservation District is looking to continue the program, the Gypsy Moth program, as we've done it in the past, uh, with the only problem or change in the program of putting the responsibility of collecting the fees to the municipalities. So um, it would, we will continue to conduct the surveys and do the field checks and obtain, um, solicit complaints and of infestations and then going out and doing those field checks and the mapping and sending all that information to DCNR for those areas that qualify and then it will be up to the townships. Um, so there's somewhat of a change in timeline on collecting all those fees and paying those bills, but I would be meeting with those townships that are going to be on board and discussing the changes in the programs with them. They're recommending that those municipalities interested in participating in the program share in the administration by handling the billing within their spray blocks. The final decision whether or not to participate in the program ultimately then would lie with the municipality. The Conservation District would assist, assist each municip participating municipality by supplying a list of names, addresses, total acreage, cost per acre, and total cost per township. It, th it would then be the municipality's decision on how those funds are to be paid, whether they want to pay 50% municipal, 50% property owner, 100% property owner, 100% municipality. Those are basically the choices or any split that they would deem appropriate. Uh, it would also be the responsibility of the participa participating municipalities to invoice and collect those payments from property owners uh, if they do decide to pass on, pass on any cost to the landowner. The county would still be uh, the contractor with DCNR for the program, uh, and that's, that's the only choice, and the DCNR will, will uh, participate with counties. Right. The shift of responsibility for billing and collection to the municipalities. My understanding, uh, talking with DCNR, is they look to the county coordinator to be the focal point for collecting all the funds, and they won't go to a, 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 sm a, a lower level. Individually, they cannot go to a lower level individually. The, the townships cannot run the program. I am still a coordinator. I, do, I, I can collect those funds from the townships. I understand. How the townships get those funds, I don't care. But I'm collecting from the townships. Long so the DCNR is still looking to you right. for, the, for the money. That's correct. They're looking to the county commissioners because they signed the contract. Right, right. But they're looking to the county. Uh, and, and you as a coordinator then would, uh, would be respond the focal point for collecting the funds from the municipality. No, I well, from the municipalities, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, as long as they get, the, they get paid, they're not Somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody's got to take the responsibility for collecting the funds the from the municipalities. We are yeah. in charge of that. We are, we, okay. I said, we will send out that list of all people within a spray block to the municipalities and say, we have X amount of acres in your township at this cost. We expect a check in this amount. How you get that funding is totally up to you. I understand. I understand. I just want to go about collecting that if they want to. Right, to, you know, is up to them. Right. But the chain, the chain of funds would be that DCNR will receive a check from the county right. for for all the sp spray blocks. The county will receive a check from the conservation district for all the, for all the municipalities. The municipalities will pay the conservation district, and then below that level, it's up to the municipality on how they want to amass the funds. Or well, basically, no pay. Year, well, the, the, the coordinator. And you are the coordinator. Uh, is supposed to be proactive according to the guidelines from DCNR in notifying communities, I believe, through advertising or some other means that there may be a gypsy moth infestation in your neighborhood. Give people uh, a lot of time to collect the information and what have you, so that the the citizens, the homeowners or the property owners, are aware of the potential threat and and what have you. That didn't seem to happen last year. It seemed, you know, and I don't want to go and dredge all that up because uh, I want to keep my blood pressure down. But um, are you going to play that role starting this year going forward? That is being, the, in other words, if you take the manual out, are you going to follow the manual? It's already in the newspaper. It's okay. The Patriot News. Okay. We're waiting today. I didn't know where we were really going. They were saying about the spraying. Actually, what was in the paper was saying that they're going to be spraying 
yeah. the spring. But yes, the public notices are required to be going out in early April. So okay. That's why. Uh, I'm, I'm really, yeah, I know you. Uh, that's on the spring, but on the inspection no, the part of it. the public notice is to be going out in early April. Okay. And I could not do anything until I got okay. a direction okay. from the county commissioners on where this program was going. Fine. Okay. W one other point. Uh, in this intense uh, dialogue about protecting oak trees and gypsy moss and what have you that occurred last fall, one of the things that happened was there was a lot of information that was disseminated publicly that was absolutely wrong about gypsy moss. Uh, and what I'm concerned about uh, is that since it was done in a public forum, could give people the, the wrong impression. Things like spraying doesn't work, after 2,000 years the gypsy moth has changed. Uh, that was one of the things. Uh, another thing that was actually shocking to me uh, was that when I went to, that's the only meeting I've been to of your conservation district, when DCNR was making their presentation, it was abundantly clear that the people who are on the board Oh, no, 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 that was, it was, it was a member of the board that said that publicly and didn't understand the program. Then she is also speaking for the most of the public, because that's what the public wants. They want okay. rid of the gypsy moths when they have an infestation. I understand. And it, is, and it is long program. It is not a successful program when you spray small areas and are surrounded by state game lands that okay. don't get sprayed and have a blow yeah, I, but what, So there's what many I'm, views and it, it doesn't matter. But what so I'm getting to is... There's a program in place, it's continuing, okay. that's where yep. we are, and that's where we're going from yep. here. But what I'm saying is that don't you feel that you have a responsibility to try and set the record straight and actually educate the public? Because we're talking about... I would be more than happy, and I think it's better to be as protecting public land where everybody benefits. It's your property, it's your responsibility. To I know a lot about property. Gypsy Moss. And I venture to say I know more than anybody on your board about gypsy moths. And, uh, and I can give you a, a report card on your website and, and tell you things that I, I've talked to the, the like Dow Agro Sciences and what have you, and I know things about how to kill gypsy moths that you people aren't aware of. But the Our website offers mega information on what people can do to, to control the gypsy moth. Your website recommends things that Virginia Tech says just happens to be the most expensive way to try and kill gypsy moths. It's about, uh, you know, it's about $200 to, to handle a couple of acres. There are other chemicals that are commercially available that would cost like $3 an acre, and you don't cite them. But anyway, that's a separate story. It all depends on your own individual property. You live in a mega wooded area. Mm -hmm. You cannot absolutely do burlap or eradicate or anything. People have maple trees or a two or three oak trees on their property that have hundreds of acres of egg sacs on them. What do you do if you have three or four? There are many people in the county who don't live in a residential area but have a gypsy moth farm. Another thing, Some of these are ways to deal with the problem that's on a yeah, smaller scale. But what you've missed are the most effective way to control gypsy moss for the homeowner. Specifically, there's a product called Golden Pest Spray Oil. It's food grade soybean oil. It's approved by the entomologist at the University of Wisconsin. It's approved by the USDA Forest Service. It is the only product that is approved and listed and has research reports and documentations that shows 96% kill of egg masses if you spray a couple drops of this stuff on an egg mass. That is not listed on your website. That has never been given to us by DCNR. We, we, Do you we want me to give you the information? They are the people in charge of the program. It's still... Their orientation is helicopters. And, and the real issue is you're dealing with homeowners. No, and I'm saying that you have a role, or should have a role, since Gypsy Moss is your, your rat killing area, that you should take a leadership role in communicating to homeowners. We, we're going to do the I program... I was the chairman. I was going to make a motion. For what? <laughs> Go ahead. I think I know what your motion might be. Go ahead. I've given you the floor. Well, thank you. I would like to make a motion so that Lee can move ahead and know how to proceed. That um, I think it was called option one, 
so that um, the townships or municipalities, I guess would be a proper term, would have the billing um, end of this program and you would do the science and the contacting of the townships.